Happy Friday, everyone. It is 8 a.m. Chicago time, 9 a.m. Eastern on Friday, the 24th of August, 2018. Thanks for joining me again. Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. This morning's market stance appears to be allocating to risk. Uh, we're seeing the dollar dropping. Uh, the dollar's down 32 cents or 0.33%. The bonds are down 13 ticks. The 10-year notes are down six ticks. The yen is down five pips, and the bund is down four ticks. Everything else is positive that I monitor. With crude oil leading the pack, crude oil coming back to the beginning, to the almost to the high of the beginning of August. Uh, it's currently trading 68.76, up 93 cents or 1.37 percent, uh, followed by gold. The big thing to keep an eye on today. Uh, is the parade of uh, Fed speakers at Jackson Hole. Uh, Jackson Hole begins at 9 o'clock right now, and we'll start to hearing from various um, uh, Fed uh, FOMC members, uh, Fed speakers, and um, starting with uh, Fed Speaker Kaplan at 9.30 Eastern, which is right at the open a half hour from now. Uh, he'll be on Bloomberg TV. At 10 o'clock, though, is the big one. Uh, Fed Chair Powell will be discussing the economy and monetary policy. Uh, I suspect that uh, we're likely to go sideways until that happens. Uh, this is a major, um, uh, could be a major event. Uh, this goes on all the way up to 4 o'clock this afternoon with Fed Speaker Bostic uh, again on Bloomberg. So throughout the day, we expect economic news to, to kick out. Uh, so just pay attention. Um, other than that, uh, let's take a look at what we expected yesterday versus what we got. Yesterday, the main trade idea was for um, was for the market to test up to or around 28.65 and then rotate down uh, and push out of the range. Uh, and what I was hoping to be a trend down to 28.48.50. 28.48.50, if you recall, key area right here. See this right there? This uh, this area carries back uh, a ways. Uh, 28.45 is a huge low volume uh, node. It's a huge low volume node from way, way back from January. Um, and then the upper on the upper end, we're looking at 28.70. Uh, so yesterday, the main expectation is to push uh, up into 65 or so, and then to fall out of range and to tag that 48.50. The trend was expecting expected to be down, so scenario one and two were expected to be lower. Scenario three was the opposite, uh, was looking for to push to 28.70 and then 28.72 above there. Um, so what did we actually get? Is anyone having trouble seeing the video, seeing a complaint? Looks like everything's running on my end. Um, what did we actually get? Uh, we got an open right at uh, 28.59.75, which is the key point of control in the area. And then we saw buyers come in pretty strong right off the get-go, okay? And um, even though price was moving up uh, pretty strong, the delta through this uh, through this run was actually fairly muted. Uh, so this set up the short. Uh, this set up the short around 65. Um, I'm trading with three-point stops. Uh, the, if, if I had taken it right at uh, 65, I would have been a tick away from being stopped, but ultimately it pushed through. So the first trade of the day, looking for uh, it to stall out in the stock zone and then for it to start moving lower, uh, that first trade of the day was a stop out. Uh, was a stop out. So it, start, it, it ended up pushing up, coming back to 64 and a quarter to the tick, uh, and then it started to drift up. Now the second trade of the day, is a push above the prior day's range, poking above the prior day's range. But what I saw 
Again, still trading in the context of the short, the bias of the short. Uh, at this point, uh, it was uh, definitely extended uh, and it didn't look so hot for the shorts anymore. It looks like scenario three playing out. Uh, but as, as, uh, as, as I monitor order flow, I see that it's just having an incredibly hard time maintaining uh, prices above 80, uh, uh, 89, 69, 75 and it starts to fail over and it creates a second opportunity below the prior day's high for rotation down. So we ultimately get scenario one where it pushes down below, but it pushed uh, from our target area, pushed almost four points above, not, uh, not very cool. Uh, but in any case, here we are, uh, we, we push all the way through and we have a break at the high of the initial bound so we have range extension up and then we have a, an impulsive a strong impulsive move down uh, with a range extension down uh, into the uh, late morning uh, giving us an opportunity for a lower low whatever this low is 28.55 and a quarter we expect that eventually that low will be taken out with an extension the extension was weak uh, just two ticks down to 54.75 and that was the low of the day. The low of the day was retested right here at 55, even missed by a tick. Very interesting structures um, coming into <coughs> with this market right now. It's slow, uh, but once it moves, you, it, here, here's the thing. You kind of have to sit around doing nothing. It's almost like um, I, I compared this to being a security guard or uh, somebody who works at a, at, a, at a gate, like a gatekeeper. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh my God, everything's happening. And then nothing, 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 nothing. Like it's, it's like working security or being a policeman, I guess, or a policewoman. Uh, that's how, but the, the structures themselves are pretty healthy. Uh, great opportunity right here. Uh, I, sh I showed images of that. Um, showed images of that in the convergent chat where we pushed into this uh, we pushed into this VWAP OS high uh, area uh, just below the mid on really weak order flow setting up this uh, push lower couldn't take this trade I was in a webinar but uh, we saw an, uh, an equivalent opportunity back here at 6175 again for a run down uh, to to another test of the low. Of course, I was hoping it would slip through into the close and get us down to 48.50. It did not. The overall um, the overall day type this morning uh, yesterday was uh, neutral. Uh, you almost it almost qualifies for neutral extreme low. Uh, but what it what it ended up being is a B-shaped profile, long liquidation profile. So we moved away from the top and we bounced at the bottom pretty much all afternoon. So what we have is a long liquidation uh, profile. The market's squeezing lower and that goes in line with what we see on the composite. Remember, I put up this composite showing that the market is kind of drifting lower it's uh, it's reached its cap now, uh, how do i see this this is a, a these bars that you see here are daily bars rth only uh on uh when was it wednesday uh, or tuesday we pushed all the way up to 74 and look at how we finished we finished near lows we finished near lows and then the next day we open in a gap and we push into the prior range and we end up closing uh, somewhere in the middle with a lower high, lower low. This here is a strong indication of uh, of, uh, of a topping formation. And so that fed the context of a, of a retest of 48.50 and 45 down here. It did not accomplish that yesterday. But uh, this, is, this, this is what it looked like to me on the big picture. I'm not an analyst. I'm a day trader, but the, the the we put in a lower low and a higher high yesterday. We had a bearish, kind of a bearish uh, engulfing type of day. We finished at the low end of the range. It shows weakness. This is a long liquidation profile from yesterday. It shows weakness. Today, we're popping up to 64 and a quarter. Um, we're trading at 64 and a quarter. We've popped up instead of continuing lower overnight, uh, and, and, and that's... Uh, that's creating a bit of a, 
an odd situation here. So here it is. Uh, we we close at 57.75. We open at 58 and a quarter. We go sideways. Inventory overnight inventory is almost completely long. Coming into this, and what do we have in the overnight? We have a P-shaped profile, almost the 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 neck of which is almost exactly where we uh, had our B-shaped profile yesterday. So our B-shaped profile yesterday was right here. The neck of it is at 61. The neck of that is at about 61. Uh, and the balance, the MC point of control in this area is at 65. And that's where we are now. Very odd, uh, kind of a very conflicting setup here uh, in the overnight. Although I still see context. I see the narrative describing a pullback still to 48.50, but it may not happen today. Now, today is going to be driven by news events, by uh, Fed speakers talking about the economy. I mean, the, the, when Fed speakers speak, especially about the economy, especially Powell, uh, the market's going to listen. And so that's what's driving the action today. So it's likely to be fairly quiet with some schizophrenia somewhere in the, in the middle of it. Um, but the overall the overall flow of the overnight session is uh, is biased to the buy side. The volume is in line with the most common volume. 110,000 is the, around 110,000 is the most common over a large period, two years, and we've got 115,000. So the volume overnight's in line. We're above mid, above VWAP, around the point of control. The point of control is in the upper quartile of the range. Uh, so this is showing a positive pressure by pressure coming in that there's a the the delta is also showing um inventories long in volume as well so we'll see if that uh, corrects itself at the very open okay now let's look at what we plan to do today so let's look at today i'm going to take uh this composite and shrink it down to to what has happened since we peaked out if you look at what was hap what has happened since we peaked out we have a pretty fat profile here pretty uh, decently fat profile we still have that 70 up there um, with a point of control at 65 right there so it's um it's it's um we're we're right in the middle of uh of this noise here and of this balance uh, as we come in, so I'm shrinking. I'm just looking at the last three days since the peak, since they've traded. Why am I putting a composite on the last three days? Putting a composite on the last three days because, as you can see, they've traded within each other, and and the goal with the with a micro composite really is to see where balance is, what it has done within that range. Okay, the overall uh, the overall uh, point of control is at 58, so we're in between 65 and 58 65 50 and 58 uh, and we're balancing out so not the greatest situation for the market to tip over uh, just yet now let's look at uh, what we are planning on for today but before we do that let's take a moment and hit the like button if you're watching this on twitter please hit the, uh, the youtube button at the bottom right uh, if you're looking at this on the convergent web page please do the same may require you to log into your Gmail account uh, for YouTube, but please take the time to do so. I'd appreciate it. Uh, coming into today, here's what we've got. Uh, we're opening in range. We have a weak high up here. Okay, We have a weak high up here. You can see it on the profile, pretty weak high. Uh, we've tested out the prior high and pushed through, but we still traded quite a bit at yesterday's weak high. Uh, the taper on the low is also weak. We, we tested out the uh, the low yesterday by a tick. We retested the low by a tick. We went to 55 versus 54.75. So we've got multiple weak highs, a weak low. We're in balance. What, what do we expect? We expect the market to consolidate today. Consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. We're expecting chop. Uh, it's again, it's Friday, summer, um, and and so we expect it to chop around. But eventually, I expect it to be to gravitate towards the uh, prior day's close and point of control down at 57.75 and so on. 
uh, for a retest. And then it's all about the Fed today. It's all about this Jackson Hole meeting. So it's hard to determine what the bias is. But I can tell you what targets there are for either side. The key target uh, up above, we hit the 70 yesterday. The key target up above becomes 74 and 77 if we are so inclined to move. That's quite a move. You know, that's, uh, that's 20 points. Not sure we'll get that. But that's the key target above. And then scenario two, so there's no sense in redrawing this. Scenario two is just basically taking us down through yesterday's low for a bounce consolidation at the MC point of control and an eventual test of 48.50. That's scenario two. Given the configuration of how we open today, there's a fair amount of support underneath the ES. That's why scenario one is to the top side. Okay, so just be open-minded today. Yes, the, the bias was strong to the downside yesterday. It did surprise by pushing up as far as it did, push through by uh, almost four points, but ultimately it, it fulfilled the, the greater narrative, which is to drop and take out the prior low, and the drop was pretty big. It's 10 points approximately. Um, today, given the configuration, it is not able to, uh, the sellers are not able to keep the lid on buyers. And so what we have down below is a pretty good base underneath us right in this area here uh, for some support. This is why I'm looking at it this way. Now, if it surprises and it starts to push through on the first run, that gives us scenario three. If it surprises and it tests up, and an impulse down and it continues lower then look for the pullback for a continuation of 4850 basically the same um basically the same scenario as yesterday on scenario three okay so i'll leave you with that please take a moment to hit the like button on your way out hopefully you're gaining something out of these videos every week remember it's the end of the week take a moment at the end of the day to do your performance uh, log your trade performance log so that you know what your expectancy is you know where you are so you can set a goal for next week to achieve a greater expectancy by eliminating errors by slowing down by being more selective with your trades and executing the edge whenever it shows up that's what it takes to be a professional good luck today and i'll catch you uh, on monday take care